So now, Paul, we've talked about kind of, uh, we could build a big telescope, we could build a small one, and it depends on the colors of light that we see and how well, how much we can resolve, not magnify, how well we can resolve on Earth. Now, let's actually take a look at what this means, because yes, what does 10 centimeter resolution look like? What does one meter resolution look like? So this is from a few years ago. Here's a nice photo on the ground. We did this as part of a project called Satellite Selfie. Surprisingly, we took a selfie from space. Now, not us, and you'll see why. So we have a nice oval, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander flag, and, and the ANU crest. Well, if we go to a drone, still you see a detail. But let's start looking at this. So we'll say our oval is 80 meters by 130 meters. So, you know, big. And you should be able to see it from space for the most part. But if we go back to this equation, let's say we want to look at the greeny orange color. And we're going to have a 44 centimeter telescope. Now, this is the actual size of ESA Sentinel satellite that does lots of Earth observations. It orbits at 786 kilometers, so it's kind of always following the sun around because there's no point of looking to the Earth at night because you're not going to see anything. <laughs> now, the best it could do is 1.3 meters. But there's other cameras, there's other wavelengths, there's some other subtleties of building it. It's a bit old. So really, the best it only does is 10 meters. So even though one is our theoretical best, Practically, it ends up being a little bit worse than that. And when you're designing one of these spacecraft, there is a trade-off here. I mean, um, until very recently, you were limited in how many pixels you had right. in your detector, and you could decide to have all those pixels to be a really detailed image of a small part, or a less detailed image of a large area. And there's and many purposes. Exactly. Like if you want to map the entire Earth, then um, you're going to be limited by the number of pixels. That's right. So you might choose to have each pixel be 10 meters rather than 1.3 because it gets you 10 More times area. wider field of view. Another limitation is the downloads for you, the communication That's right. we're talking about. Let's imagine you've got a high resolution view of every point of Earth every 10 seconds. There's no way you could communicate that much data down to Earth. That's right. So there's trade-offs. And in this particular decision, they made the trade-off that they weren't going to go for 1.3, they're going to go for 10 meter resolution. Because that gives them a little bit bigger area, they're probably more manageable data. But what does it actually look like in resolution? Well, now, if we have 80 meters by 130 meters, every box is one single pixel, 10 meters by 10 meters. So we're actually not gonna cover that much area. So yes, that would look green, that would look green. But what about here? We have a little bit of black, we have a little bit of white and mostly green. Well, you're probably only gonna see green. Here, maybe some red. So we're gonna start to lose rapidly that detail. So it's probably good enough to say, you're on an oval, but that's probably about it. And again, maybe that's all you need. Now, let's imagine we go to a telescope that now has a 50 centimeter resolution. So we're going from 10 meters to 50 centimeters, and this is a real one. So now instead of only having eight pixels by 13 pixels, we're now going to 160 by 260. So every little one now is made up of a whole bunch of tinier ones. So now we see red, 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 green, green, green. So we can now start to see a little bit of detail. So what does this actually, let's take another practical example. Imagine again, we got you, Paul, about one and a half meters tall. You're probably a bit taller than that, but that's a nice number because 50 centimeters into one and a half meters means you're three pixels. You're three by two pixels. So I could probably see that you have some blue and maybe some black and probably about it. You may have a head, I don't know. Um, hard to say from space. If I increase you to 30 centimeters, well, now you get a little bit more. You're now five pixels, so you now have a little bit more blue and a little bit more black, but that's probably about it. Now, the best commercial available, so maybe there's something that we don't know, and there probably is, but this is the best commercial one right now is 10 centimeters. So we're going from 10 meters to 50 centimeters, 30 and 10. So now you actually are 15 pixels by 10 pixels. So now I can start to see there's probably some different colors. I could probably pick out a button. So I can start to see a little bit more detail depending on what we're looking at. And so when we think about this in reality, this is our image on the ground. This is the same exact image at 50 centimeter resolution. Okay, well that's not bad. So it's actually not bad. You can clearly see the letters. You could even see little bits of the crest. 
you can see that there's a couple of flags. You can see some goalposts. You can see there's a person there. Now I can't tell who that is. I can't tell if that's you photobombing me or not, Paul, but I can at least say there's someone there. But you also start to notice we lose a little bit of detail. We get this, these bright colors on the ground, but in space, we're a little bit limited in how much detail we can pick up. And we're seeing cars in the car park down here. We can tell it's a white car or a black car. We can see they've got a, I don't know if it's possible to work out what model of car it would be from one of these things. Probably if you knew your cars very well, you could try and estimate the length and width and try and work out what model that is, but it'd be difficult. It would be difficult, but as you said, if people already know what they're looking for, then you can slightly use some calculations, machine learning to say, that's that. But you know, nowadays, you know, we can quite clearly see a building. We're, we're just filming off over here. So if we looked at some of our previous examples where we get 110 meters, so bigger than this whole area, we can now see pretty fine detail. So maybe it's not as bad. Maybe that despite the limits of diffraction and despite the limits of resolution, we can still make out what we want. And this is probably about the limit for spy satellites as well, to be honest. I That's mean, right. We talk about you know, the military have unlimited budgets and so on, but they can't put the spacecraft much lower than a few hundred kilometers because it right. would burn up in the atmosphere. Exactly. And they can't have a mirror that's much more than a meter or two because... Because they physically have to get into space. Yes, and the nose cones of military rockets are not that different from the nose cones of anything <laughs> else. So realistically, I mean, uh, space, one might have twice the resolution. It's not going to have 10 times the resolution. So you're seeing a person there, yes, recognizing it, Mm. Seeing cars here, yes, probably milk at the model, but you're not going to read the number plate. Exactly. They're not going to be spying on you that much.